Hello, Stereo Azimuth here, and I've got an exclusive. Uh, hopefully it won't be exclusive much longer, but I have a desktop solid state amp that everyone is going to want. Unfortunately, it's going to be like limited quantities uh, up to a thousand. It is not quite on sale just yet as of this moment. Um, as of November 1st, 2022, uh, but will be hopefully, um, later this month. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, it is this, the niche piety, the niche piety. Uh, so let's talk about this amp for a second. Looks like shit amp, right? Looks exactly like it. You may think. Wow, they're ripping off uh, shit. Now, um, this is a prototype uh, amp, but it will be in the same sort of case, um, although the, the final look, uh, you can look on their website, which I will post a link in the description, is going to be uh, very sort of different than this, although um, the function is going to be exactly the same. Um, so the, the, basically what happened with the amp and the story goes and you, like I said, you can kind of read from it is that like Jason Stoddard from shit kind of thought about like, what if I made a Jotunheim two, but made a smaller like output version. And what if I put it in like a Magni, uh, like case, and so he did, and he sent it out for prototypes for a few uh, people to listen, and they really liked it. It didn't measure exactly well. It doesn't have as much power as a full Magni 3 um, does. However, it had some sort of like tube-like quality to it that sounded really good, especially like in the mids, this like really lush uh, like kind of tube mids that everybody loves. So then... Um, like uh, Christian, uh, the person that made Piety, also called CT, uh, he came up with the idea. I was like, well, why don't we do a limited run? Um, because part of the reason why uh, it never went to mass production is some of the transistors that are used are very sort of hard to find. Um, but they have like exceptional qualities that they really like, and so. They, you know, Jason said, well, sure, we can do it, but we might need to source out other parts that are available. So they sourced out some other parts. They put some prototypes together and said, yeah, this this is great. We can we can do this. We can do this with these uh, with these transistors instead. And so everything kind of got put in place. And that's been what's going on for the past, like, I, th I think sort of year behind the scenes. I don't know. And. I, it's, I know it's been when Jason originally came up with the idea, it was like many years ago, like before the pandemic and before like part shortages and all that kind of stuff. So, but now we have the amp. We have this sort of idea of this tube amp. Now, remember, go back to the measurements too, like before the pandemic, like we're, you know, and still kind of today, like the um, dealing with, we must get as much, you know, low noise and signal to noise ratio and and amps as possible, like no matter what. And um, people were chasing after measurements. And I don't know if it's to do with uh, mostly to do with, you know, audio science review. And um, so like, the, but but really, I mean, I listen with my ears. I don't listen with a measurement scope. Um, so it's, it, my ear can tell me whether, you know, something is good or, or not. So, yeah, so that, I mean, but just going back to this amp, I mean, this piety amp is absolutely amazing. It has, um, it, it's not extremely, um, powerful, but if you're using Sennheiser headphones, like high impedance headphones, uh, like 
HD 600s, HD 650s, it has the same amount of power as a Magni 3 Plus. The Magni 3 Plus is higher power when it comes down to like lower impedances, uh, almost twice as much. Um, but the thing about the presentation between these two amps, when I first plugged this amp in and like what it sounded like, is it sounded, it sounded open, it sounded clean, it sounded lots of depth, um, like amazing, amazing amount of openness and depth where other solid state amps that I have, like even my Eddie Current Black Widow, or even, uh, I'll get to my Dynalo in a second, but the Magni 3 Plus, like the comparison was like everything in the, the 3 Plus is like flat and everything is just like in your face and just like right against your ear and like, you know, sort of front row and just sort of like pounding in your head with the piety. Everything just seemed to open up this, you know, this whole room and things can sort of appear out of like this uh, blackness and, um, it's just very pleasant to listen to, especially over long periods of time. And even like I could listen to it in low gain, uh, but turn the volume up. And even when you listen in low gain, you know, low gain always like the, the distortion like figures go down. It sounded even cleaner. And then there's a little bit of like tube uh, sort of warmth or bloom when, when you hit the uh, in the low gain. Uh, when you hit the high gain, like a little more, the the transients come through. A little bit more of those those peakiness come through. Um, but yeah, it is it is louder, um, and has a little more like gain. The the sound stage collapses like just a, a little bit more. So yeah, I mean it 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 sounded great. Like I you know as far as like um, tonality. Uh, the, you know, the top end is, is very smooth. There's no like real grain, uh, or grittiness or anything like that in, in the piety. And, um, like, you know, if, if you have the Magni three is like very sort of like solid state, you know, harshness, then you have the Valley two, which has like a tube kind of like in there and you've got kind of the, 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 uh, the tubiness you know, in the mids, but it still doesn't take everything out. There's still some like harsh kind of like top end, um, you know, sheen or whatever you want to call it. And then, and then you get the, 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 the piety and it's just, everything is so just sort of grain free. I've never really heard a grain free, like solid state amp. Um, but here we are. Um, and it even shined very well on uh, my low impedance headphones. I have some like emu teaks and it sounded great on that, especially in low gain. Um, so didn't really sound too peaky. Um, it's, it's a very well all around amp. Uh, and it's only 149. It's a desktop size Magni amplifier for 149. It has line outs on the back for if you want to hook up uh, speakers that are not active until you, you know, unplug um, the headphone jack. So if not on the headphone jack, line out on the back, power, gain, you know, high, low. These will all be marked. This is a prototype. So um, the screening, there's no screening on this one because it's a prototype. The case looks a little bit darker from the other pictures that I've seen. It looks a little more silver. Just to give you a contrast, this one, this is a Magni 3. This is the, like, the shit, like, black. And this is kind of the uh, silver. But I think that this um, is still going to be a little bit lighter uh, in color rather than this gray. The niche, this is going to be uh, a lot smaller it's not going to be quite as big. Like I said, you can you can go look at pictures online and see uh, what this looks like because this is just a um, this is just a prototype amp, um, and it, it'll even have a uh, the black knob on the front. But I just wanted to talk about the sound quality uh, of the amp, and I think that everybody is going to really like this amp. 
and really, really say it's one of the, the better, like, solid state amps. It's not going to be very powerful for, like, uh, planar headphones. Um, but for Sennheisers or low impedance headphones, you'll be fine. Or even planers that are, you know, low to medium drive, uh, you'll be uh, totally fine, um, you know, with this. I think it had a lot of details. I would say it kind of competes, like, in the $500 market. Like, um, you know, I... There's still, you know, because a lot of people say, you know, are very, this this amp has a lot of hype from when it showed up at the Austin shit meet with Austin and um, Emotiva. And a lot of people heard it there and loved it and thought it sounded very tube-like, which I get. I mean, it, it does have this, like, mid-range, like, tube uh, sort of clarity. Um, but I, I wouldn't, still wouldn't compete it with you know, amps that are going to be like in the thousand dollar range. I mean, those amps like the BHA one, uh, or even the shit Molinear one, or some of those, I mean, maybe like an SPL monitor. Like I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, you know, go there. It's not going to give you that amount of like, um, plankton and details and be, um, like that, but it very well competed, um, with, you know, close to my, you know, Black Widow or my Dynalo, which was a, um, uh, you know, $500 amp right now. Um, and I'll talk about it. So if you have a Gilmore Light, um, I, I think that the, they had very similar sounds. A Gilmore Light sound a, a little, it always sounded kind of U-shaped. Like there was this hole, not a hole, but like this where the mids are kind of recessed a little bit. And that's what gave it some like nice soundstage and 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 presentation and and uh, depth and things. The Piety sounded a little bit more wider, like the left and right separation was more. Gave me a little more um, like depth, so it gave me um, where the precision of where I knew uh, where things were and and where they sat in the mix. Uh, the separation was very good. Uh, unlike the uh, the the Dynalo, which was a little more smeary, especially in like the the top end, like the um, it doesn't matter. Like the Gilmore Light, my Dynalo, the always like there's sort of a um, you know in that 5K uh, range, there's kind of a smearing, and then it kind of cleans up as you as you get up to the top, but it never really um, never really kind of goes away. Um, it doesn't present itself, you know, all the time, but it's just a little bit of uh, um, of sheen in that area. Um, um, the Dynalo mine, at least, had a little bit more tube, uh, like well, tubiness, like kind of like uh, low end bloom. I call it tube bloom, but really like that that bloom below, uh, like hundred hertz or something like that, where you feel like somebody's like take the bass knob and, and turned it up a little bit. Um, the piety was much more even handed, much more, I, I felt like sort of more linear, especially in the mids. There's a lot more rich texture in the mids than I got from the, the Dynalo or, or what you would call a Gilmore light. So, I mean, that's, that's what it's comparing with, with the Magni three plus, like I said, Magni three plus to me, much more aggressive sounding much more like in your face, much more front row um, and, and much more sheen kind of coming at you. Um, it's still a really, you know, good amp that'll power like a lot of um, like headphones. Um, but I think that, you know, over long periods of time, um, I still like the, the piety. And I will say that it sounds kind of, polite I guess that you would say but I wouldn't call it like laid back I guess um uh, I mean it, it doesn't sound like uh, like this like British like sort of like backseat sort of haziness there's still like a lot of um clarity that happens there and a lot of um dynamics that it's that it's still going on so I rank it somewhere between like uh, if you have a liquid spark, which is like very sort of like laid back and that sort of thing, and then 
you you know you have a magni 3 is sort of the opposite end of that spectrum like where the piety would be was like sort of like right in the middle which is why i think that it's it's just so um pleasant to listen to because in in sort of like this jack of all trades sort of like solid state amp that a lot of people are going to really like so and i would recommend it for anybody like just getting started and just getting hooked in you know to a lot of people it, it fits a lot of categories uh so once the thousand sell out i don't know how many uh are gonna sell i hope that christian sells out like all of them uh like on the first day but uh we'll have to see how long like through you know the holidays through uh, november and december that um that they will last and i hope that everybody like really that has them you know that, that's able to get one like really enjoys one and then um you know so we'll have to see how it goes whether they're gonna continue to try to make a, you know another version but at least the first version uh is only gonna be like a thousand i'm gonna say first version and i hope that there's a second version because it, it it's just so good it's just uh it's just that great. So I don't want to like kind of feel bad adding to the the hype train, but I also want to say that, you know, it's still um not a not a mega buck uh sort of killer. I mean, um it, I I think that uh uh you could probably put it in a bigger box with the, uh, you know, um big fat aluminum chassis and and charge, you know, $500 for it. Um that's how I feel. But the way that it is and the way that it's designed, um, you know, assembled here in the United States um, for 149 is, is still a, a wonderful, wonderful deal. And I hope that you can get your hands on it. So uh, but that's uh, that's my deal here. Um, and I just wanted to showcase that and uh, direct you to the website where you can um you know you can plug in at this moment you can plug in your email address and get notified when these uh things go on sale uh so you can get yours they're being assembled as we sp as as i speak or whatever um so anyway i'm stereo azimuth and we'll talk to you guys later <laughs>